Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at the new 3D scanner from Creality. This is the CR Scan Raptor, and it's the world's first hybrid blue laser and near infrared consumer scanner. So what does that mean, and is it any good? Let's get started. Wow, look at this. The case looks super premium. It's like a Pelican case. Let's see what we've got inside. This looks like a very premium device. Blue lasers and infrared on the front and control buttons on the back. We've also got a power adapter, a USB cable to connect the scanner to a computer. Underneath this first layer, we've got some reflective dots to aid scanning. And this is the calibration board to make sure the scanner is accurately calibrated. So the interesting part of this scanner is that it's a hybrid. Like a hybrid car which has an electric motor and a petrol engine, this scanner has two different methods of scanning built in. The near infrared scanner is the scanning method that most 3D scanners use with an accuracy of 0.1 millimeters. It can scan objects from the size of a mobile phone up to the front end of a car. However, the new and most interesting feature of this scanner is the blue light seven line laser which offers incredible scanning accuracy down to just 0.02 millimeters. We'll take a look at these two different modes and scan some different things to see the results that we can get and how we can integrate this into a 3D workflow. First, we'll try something basic, a face scan. The scanner has default settings for scanning a face and this is something I can easily do myself using the scanner by keeping very still and moving the scanner around my face. This uses the NIR mode of the scanner, which scans at 20 frames per second with an accuracy of up to 0.1 millimeters. It takes about two minutes to scan my face and you can see the scanner provides a detailed result, which is great for close up renders. I pop this 3D scan into Blender, added a couple of lights to get a result really quickly. The scanner also offers a full body scanning mode to capture an entire person. My daughter scanned my whole body in about three minutes and then I took the file into Blender where I imported it into this scene downloaded from Blender Kit. It was really easy to resize and position the scan and the final render looks great. This is such an easy way to add a realistic person into a render scene. Next, let's try something different. The last 3D scanner I tried had problems scanning rubber and black materials. So let's try scanning this shoe with a black rubber sole and some black materials on the side. I'm going to use a turntable for this one. The scanning software has a turntable mode built in. Now a top tip. If you don't already have a turntable, you can raid your microwave. You can use the glass tray and rollers in the bottom to make your own quick and simple turntable. Nice even lighting is important for this. So I've set up a simple fill light next to the window to help the scanner get the best results. I'm slowly spinning the turntable around while keeping the scanner mostly still to capture the shoe from all angles. It takes about two minutes to scan the entire shoe. And you can see here from the results that everything looks good with the black rubber sole coming out and the black on the side of the shoe coming out nicely. Right, let's get onto the exciting part, the blue laser scanning. For this experiment, I'm going to scan this plastic part which came off my washing machine. It has some thin plastic fins and detailed clips, which traditionally are very difficult for a 3D scanner to cope with. It's a fairly featureless white molding with two sides that I'm going to try and scan in two parts and then join them together. Now, blue laser scanning requires you to stick the supplied reflective markers onto the object that you're scanning. You need a lot of markers as the scanner always needs to see at least four at any given time. This aids the scanner to know which part of the model is being scanned and helps with the tracking. This blue laser scans at 60 frames per second with an accuracy of 0.02 millimeters. It takes about five minutes to scan one side of the plastic part. Next, the part gets flipped upside down and I scan the other side. You can see the outstanding detail captured here. All the plastic fins are present and you can even read the numbers stamped into the plastic. Within the software, you can then select three parts of the model which are common to both scans, 
and the software automatically aligns and joins these models together to make one complete scan, which includes all of the model. Once meshing and optimizing is complete, we've got this incredible finished model made up of both scans, which you could use to make a 3D printed copy or as an engineering reference or as a prop in a 3D scene. As far as I know, there's no other way to get such a detailed and accurate 3D model so quickly using any other method. So what are the limitations of this scanner? Well, it isn't that portable unless you have a laptop as the scanner needs to be plugged into a computer to work. Both modes of the scanner have different strengths and weaknesses. I scanned this can of beans using both blue laser and near infrared. The blue laser scan takes longer to scan and process, but it's captured the complex geometry of the can perfectly, although the material texture isn't that high resolution. Whereas the near infrared scan is much quicker and captures the label texture more accurately, it's at the expense of model geometry. However, near infrared can capture much larger objects, so it all depends on what you need to scan, I guess. 3D scanning is a fast growing industry, and this scanner could be really useful for engineers building prototypes, healthcare professionals for fitting prosthetics, and even for cultural heritage, where you could scan precious artworks, furniture, and sculptures for easy sharing in virtual reality. I think the real star of the show here is the blue laser scanning. As long as you can place a lot of tracking markers on your object, the geometry detail you can get out of this scanner is really amazing. Let me know if you guys have any other ideas for ways to use this scanner. And if there are any really good ones, I might make a future video on it. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll post some links to some of my other videos that you might like here. See you in the next one.